This is Arden Kirkland with our last presentation for week four of the D4L community module. To think about formative assessment, I wanted to share some useful terms from Avinash Kaushik, who's the analytics evangelist for Google. These describe the kind of engagement you're seeking and how to count it. Conversation equals comments or replies per post. Amplification equals reshares per post. And applause equals favorites or likes per post. In a graded situation, you may want to require a certain amount of each kind of post from each student in response to community prompts. Or you may reward students whose original posts get more of all of the above. Or you may just want to count some of this for yourself to gauge if your discussion prompts, etc., are being very effective, and if your students are understanding the material well enough to further the conversation. Think of the kinds of interactions you'll want to count related to your SMART objectives. In general, think of counting views as passive and counting posts of different kinds as active. In most platforms, you'll be able to measure both kinds of activity. For example, I can do that in our Moodle, so that even if you're not participating in the forum, I can see how many times you've looked at particular pages, various content, for how long, etc. Depending on your objectives, you may want to look at a simple number of posts or views, or their frequency or duration. Those are easy to measure in most systems. What's harder to measure is quality of interactions. You need to determine your own criteria for that. Some community managers measure conversation threads as a factor of quality. If there's a back and forth between members with more people engaging with the same discussion topic and responding to each other, that's usually a good sign for your community. But you may want to set up a rubric for students to understand better what you're looking for in a high quality discussion post. I've shared some samples of these in the additional resources for this week to supplement what you already learned about rubrics in the foundation module. So once you've figured out the kinds of things you want to be counting, make sure you set up a system from the beginning to be able to track that interaction, or lack thereof. Look at when do members start or stop being active? When do members start or stop viewing other content passively? What patterns emerge? And what hurdles can you eliminate or improve? You may also want to directly survey your learners at some point, including some questions about their interactions with the community. This slide and the next share some questions from surveys related to models we discussed in week one. Here are some questions excerpted from the survey instrument for the Community of Inquiry model, developed by Garrison and others. These are some questions excerpted from the Sense of Community Index, the survey instrument for the Sense of Community model. You want to aim from the beginning for positive answers to these surveys. So take a look at them and think about what activities can help with your sense of community. But beware some of the pitfalls of assessment. First, make sure you don't only listen to the most vocal participants. Have systems in place to try to get input from everyone, perhaps anonymously. It may help to offer some kind of reward for feedback. Also, make sure you're looking at the right data. The wrong data can send you in the wrong direction. Make sure your SMART objectives guide what you're measuring and why. Here's a good example from Moodle. If I set the automatic activity completion based on viewing a page, the system will check off activities even if someone has only visited a page for a second. On the other hand, user completion requires an honor system, which could have another set of problems. That's why for D4L, we're basing participation for credit on your interaction with quiz questions through each lesson and your forum posts. Those provide a little bit more accountability to help us measure the right things. Similarly, when you all read forum posts in email digests, that means I can't see real metrics of who has viewed posts in Moodle. I may see a low number of views in Moodle, but people really have read the post through email. You need to think about the particular features of your instructional module to think how community will fit in. Will instruction be short-term or long? Plan your formative or summative assessment accordingly. Will instruction be repeated for different groups over time? Then you have the opportunity to improve as you go. 
Will the community endure after the class ends? And if so, what features will change? You may have the potential to combine different sections over time. Millington lists these activities as some early interventions to keep your initial contributors active and encourage others to join in. You may want to choose a few of these as activities for your online learning community in its early days. Then, once you've gotten to that performing stage, how do you stay there? Here's where your plans for assessment come in. You need a plan to continually assess your strategy, goals, systems for assessment, and reward systems, and revise them as needed for continued improvement and growth. What interventions may be needed to keep the discussion fresh? Think about differentiated instruction. Try a variety of formats to keep diverse community members engaged. Audio, video, visual, hands-on. Also, keep it as simple as possible and be sure to reward their participation in whatever form it takes so they grow more comfortable using the platform you've provided.